to as much as and again I think we have to talk about this. Yeah. There's been players that have spoke about it. Yeah. Some publicly and some have just, you know, either brushed it at the moment. Yes. Some seem very interested. Yeah. I think it'd be wrong to not talk about the world number one, Rory yes. McElroy, yep. who just two days ago has said it's not for him. Yeah. Can you discuss? Yes. Um where do I start? So I found it fascinating. And he really made me think because I'm no different from anybody else. Rory speaks and lots of golf fans tend to listen. Um, and that's because of who he is. You know, he is exceptional. Um, he's exceptional on the course. He's compelling. You know, when you see him going on a run, you can't take your eyes off it. Um, but he's also exceptional as an individual. Uh, so, as I say, I listened and I thought, okay, that's very interesting. Um, it was interesting probably from a couple of points. Uh, he talked about being on the right side of history. And I thought to myself, yeah, <laughs> we, we, all be on the, we all want to be on the right side of history. Um, that's what we've spent the last six years hoping that we might become. Um, he talked about uh, Arnold Palmer and his participation in the conversation back in 94 where Greg was proposing a world tour. Um, now the thing that first struck me then was I was thinking, wow, actually, you know, I have a completely different view of Arnold Palmer's history. Because when I think of Arnold Palmer, the king, I think, well, he's one of the guys who created one of the most fundamental schisms in golf back in 68. You know, it was him coming together with other greats, including Jack Nicklaus, that led to the formation of the PGA Tour, which was a breakaway. So that was the top 200 players breaking away from 27,000 other professional golfers because all professional golf in the States was controlled by the PGA of America up until that point. So he actually took it upon himself with a group of guys to say, I'm going to make this better. So that was Arnold Palmer to me. Then if you read Dean Beeman's book, um, which is you know, a very interesting read, he and Jack were part of a group that nearly broke away from the PGA Tour back in 84. Um, so he, he was active. He wasn't only one of the best players the game has ever seen, but he was active in forcing the game to move on. Um, and then by 94, you know, I, I've just listened to what Greg has said, but Arnold was apparently in the room. And when he realized what the conversation was about and where it was going, he said, you know what, completely understand it if you guys want to have this conversation, but I'm going to step out. Now, at that time, he was 65 years old. He'd done it once, and he'd nearly done it twice. And at the same time, he was talking about this creation of the Golf Channel, which was the next, I should imagine, chapter in his life. Um, so that was my view. Everyone has a different view on history, and you know, we will all be judged. You know, this could be forgotten about in a few weeks' time. Um, or it could, and this is the reason we're doing this, in 30 years' time be looked back upon as the change that was good for the game and made it stronger. Now, the second point, which I have spent a lot of time thinking about, was the autonomy issue. He did mention that quite a lot. Yeah, and do you know what? I'm not surprised because it is, it is prized amongst all professional golfers, the ability to decide what you're going to do when you want to do it. Um, but that is the fundamental. When you go back six years ago to why we started to do this, as a fan, now I, I want to know where Rory's going to play. And if I'm going to tune in every week, I'd love to watch Rory play. And you know what? Right now, if he was playing within the Professional Golf League and I had anything to do with it, I'd be getting him out alongside Brooks Kupka <laughs> every, every weekend because that's what I want to see as a fan. I'd like to see those two guys go head to head. And there isn't another sport that is, you know, has a global status which allows its best talent not to compete yeah, that, that's, more often. That's a good point. From somebody, you know, I am obviously a golf fan. Mm. And I've got to the point now where I don't watch that much golf, truth be told, bar the majors, the Ryder Cup, and, and the odd event here or there, depending yep. on who's doing well and whatnot. I will put golf on sometimes on a Thursday and a Friday, and I kind of don't know who to expect to see. Sometimes the big, big guys are there, sometimes they're not. And it does 
confused me a little bit, I must say, as a fan. And if I'm honest, I, ju- I do want to watch the best players. Yeah. You know, if yeah. I am going to have a choice, I want to watch the best players competing against each other all the time. And I think that's going back to your point. That's why we watch the major championships, why yeah. we watch the Open, the Masters, the Ryder yeah. Cup, because we want to see the best players, like we see in other sports, yeah. like we see in F1 and tennis and, and football, soccer. We see the best players matching yeah. up against each other majority of the time. Does, and this is, I think it's a, a, a very important question to mm. ask, does this continue if Rory doesn't get involved? Um, well, it, as I say, it's the decision of a much larger collective. Um, I was probably a little confused at the end of listening to what Rory had to say because you know, the first thing that came through to me were the headlines. He's out, death knell, etc. Um, obviously, that's not the way I feel because I'm sat here talking to you. Um, you know, the, the Mark Twain quote, the uh, rumours of the PGL's death have greatly exaggerated. Um, this isn't about an individual. Um, I, did, I wasn't entirely sure what I'm out meant, um, but all I would say is that this is a conversation. Now, I've barely spoken to Rory over the last six years. Um, haven't had the opportunity to have the discussion about the things that matter to him. I have with others. Um, this, is a, this is a conversation that is, is, be, is intensifying now, but it's a conversation that you know, we are the catalyst for. Um, we didn't want to be out in the public domain. We wanted to have it discreetly. And if at the point in time where we said to the players, do you want to do this? They'd said no. You'd, n- you'd have never heard about it. Um, this is now playing out on a public stage. It's not, a, it's not as a result of anything we've done. The story was broken um, by somebody else. Now that that debate is happening, do you know what? I feel actually this pre- pre- presents an opportunity for that conversation. There should be others in it. There should be fans involved in it. There should be sponsors. There should be broadcasters. There should be other bodies in the sport because this is meant to be the creation of the top of the pyramid. 